Well, I think that you will not forget today's sermon <clears throat> because I'm, I have nothing to say. <clears throat> I have nothing to say. <clears throat> anyway, let me give you the outline of my message if you don't get anything else. And you have room to put the outline on the, either the front part of the bulletin or somewhere where you can write number one and then number two is the second point and number three, four, and five. So I've got five points, but I have nothing to say. <laughs> what is Nothing. 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 What is nothing minus nothing? nothing. See? So I have nothing to say. <laughs> what is nothing plus nothing equal? <coughs> nothing. nothing? Well, that's what I have to say. Exactly. exactly. Well, we're going to look at Romans, the passage that Nathaniel read for us. <clears throat> I want us to uh, certainly remember uh, the nothings that I'm going to speak about. I went to the thesaurus, not the dictionary, but the other one that I have on my desk. It's a nice set, really looks nice. I looked up what nothing meant. So therefore, my notes are a blank. They are empty. They are void. They are zero. They are zilch. They are in oblivion. They're at a loss. <laughs> Sometimes that's true. <clears throat> but this morning I really do have something very important to tell you from the scriptures. All the, road, <clears throat> all the roads of our life, in our reading of the Bible, in whenever, wherever, whenever, all of them lead to Romans chapter 8. Everything that's in the Old Testament brings us to Romans chapter 8. Everything from Romans on to the end of Revelation brings us to Romans chapter 8. The doctrine, the teachings that we mine from this book, if we just read it and read it, took a month to read it and study it, the doctrines are many. Creation, sin, faith, works, salvation. We can even sing from this book, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. This book, <clears throat> this book is probably one of the, on one of the highest peaks of God's revelation to us as it speaks of the assurance of our salvation in Jesus Christ, as it speaks of the sovereignty of God on, on the cross, speaks of the adequacy of God, the necessity of our faith in re reaction and response to the truth. But nothing, 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 nothing is what God wants us to hear. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And you will say, in your heart, after I'm done saying this, you will say, exactly. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I've been looking for. Romans chapter 5 begins the journey for us up the mountain a little bit to come to Romans chapter 8. Romans 5 speaks about the hope of the glory of Jesus Christ. Faith joining with the works of Jesus on the cross, his death, my faith, his death, and coming together 
by faith I receive what Jesus did on the cross. He did for me. Therefore, that's exactly where I want to end. What has happened here in the book of Romans, and especially chapter 8, is exactly nothing that you can do. It's exactly everything that God in Jesus Christ has done for us. So we don't look for anything here that gives me footing to say, God, I did some of that. No, 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 no. You know how much you did? You wrote it down five times. I did nothing for my salvation. Nothing, nothing. That's what I want to remember. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. When I was a young, a young boy in uh, Sunday school, I remember we sang a song that said, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. That's what you do. But other than that, I can't do anything to have my sins forgiven. Not a thing. You say, can we give to the church more money? Yes. But that doesn't do anything with your salvation. You say, can I work? Can I teach? Can I preach? Can I pray? Yes, you can. But it has nothing to do with your salvation in Jesus Christ. It's when we come to the point that we realize that there is nothing in me, about me, for me, from me, that earns our salvation but the Lord Jesus Christ's death on the cross. And so in Romans chapter 8, there's a sequence that follows. I don't have time to fill it all in, but it's a sequence that brings believers in Jesus Christ to a confidence at this present time their salvation in Jesus Christ. That's that part. <clears throat> That's that part. That brings us to the cross. Nothing brings us there but the call of God in Christ Jesus. We come to the cross because Jesus died there. But that's not really what I want to emphasize. Now, if you look at verse 37 that Nathaniel read, and if you have a pencil or pen that you can underline in your Bible, it says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, through Jesus Christ, who loved us. Because I'm persuaded of this. And neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor thing present, things present or things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. Shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's what I want you to look at. I have known many Christians that have trusted Christ as their savior and that which bothered them the most was boy I don't think I can keep saved I'm not that changed so you as a Christian is there anything that can take you away from the cross can take you away from the death of Christ nothing when you know Jesus Christ is your Savior and you're starting to learn how to read the Bible, learning to read the Bible and learning how to talk to Jesus like you and I talk. No, nothing holy in the praying that we do, but just praying, talking to Jesus. That's what we want to, to, to emphasize. We know that the, the devil can certainly bring us battles and can really convince us that we have not changed at all. But when you, when you trust Christ, he begins to do a work in you. It may, though it may not seem like he's doing it today or he hasn't done much this year, it's up to him, but it's up to you to obey. It's up to you to take this verse again. No, in all things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. 
So therefore, you've got five points to my sermon, right? Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, nothing, right? Good. Six? I knew that would be there. But don't forget the rest of it. Nothing can separate you from God's love for you. Aren't you glad? I am, because I had many reasons and probably still have many reasons to run, to wonder and to worry, but we don't need to worry. He has prepared us But know in all of the things that come our way, whether it's tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, know in all these things in Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors because he is able to save us, the Bible tells us. He's able to save us. He's able to, once we've come to Christ as our Savior, he's able to keep you. He won't let you fall He won't let you leave. He's promised to keep you. He's able to help you in whatever situation you might find yourself. The Bible says he's able to keep or to subdue all things in your life. He's able to make all grace abound toward you. He's able in all your suffering to keep you. So if God be for us, Who will, who will not be for us? If God be for us, who will make it that we won't be conquerors? If God is for me, who will be against me? Nobody. Nothing. The storms of life, are you going through some storms in your life? Suffering in our prayer requests, we noticed that there was suffering in many lives. The secret pain that you have, the sadness, none of that can keep you away from Christ. In all of those things, you are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loves us. Can't say it more clearly than that. In your relationship to Almighty God, what place does Jesus have in your life? First of all, Savior. Secondly, all of these things in verses 33 through 36 and 37 through 39, in all of these, we are more than conquerors. Give God a chance, and he will share with you his glory. Give God a chance in your life, and he will, be, he will give you his favor. Give God a chance in your life. Trust him, and he will give you his honor. Trust God in your life, and he will give you victory. Trust God, and he will give you his love to the fullest. I am persuaded that nothing can keep me from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not really justice to this passage of Scripture because, like I said, it would be all chapter 5, 6, 7, and 8. But I wanted to give, give you this truth, that nothing, whatever you come up with, we can sit down here and talk about problems, about your problems, the doubts you have, and Everything you mention, none of it will keep you from Jesus Christ. None of it. Even things that you've done wrong, even things that we say wrong, we do wrong, nothing. We go out into a world today that is very, very um, violent. We have situations that we've seen on our television the last several days. I would assume many of those people that were enjoying themselves were believers. What happened 
did not separate them from Christ. It didn't say, and it, and it never will, that God did this. It's human beings that are sinful that did this. But for you and me, if we were seated there and if I was in one of those chairs that was blown up and my life was gone, don't think, oh, poor Tom. Think, wow, Tom, you're with the Lord today. Because nothing can separate me from Jesus Christ. You have that confidence in your life. Do you have that? We all of us have had things that have broken our hearts. But it's when we come back to the scripture and we come back to the person of Jesus Christ that we realize nothing has separated me from him. He's still there. Would you believe that? Would you believe what this passage says? Do you need to know the Lord? All you have to do is bow and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Please forgive my sins. Please give me the opportunity to live for you. And use me for your honor and glory. If we say that, from that moment on, no matter how long you live, nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ who made it possible for you to be forgiven. <clears throat> Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, sometimes um, the way my words come out may not be understandable, may not be clear. That's why I trust your Holy Spirit to make it clear to us. And Lord, I pray that first of all, if there's one here today that has never just said, Lord, I want you in my life. I want you as my Savior. I want you to lead me and keep me close to you. I pray that this moment, right now, while we're praying, they will say, yes, Lord, I want that for myself. Please forgive my sins. Please give me strength. and Give me the will to read your word and to know more and more about you. I pray for each of us who know you this morning that we've walked with you a long time and we've had many ups and downs, many reversals, many pluses in our lives. But Lord, in, this, in the quietness and silence of the moment, you can speak peace. You can speak hope. And that I ask you to do. Let your word, Holy Spirit of God, touch us so that we know that there is nothing that we will face that is outside your realm of keeping us until we see you face to face. Bless your people, Lord. Help us to be an encouragement to each other. Help us to be in prayer for each other. And help us to live in the possibility side of the cross. This is all possible because Jesus lives today in heaven. In his powerful name, we thank you that there is nothing exactly that, Lord, Nothing that'll keep us from you. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.